Dear Bastards, it's been 15 days since the nuclear explosion. 15 days that I've been stuck inside this basement. Luckily, I had some supplies stuck down here, but will it be enough? Will it be enough for the future that awaits? I know I must wait at least nine weeks before I can leave this shelter, before it's at the minimal safety. I wonder how my friends, family, my neighbors, everyone on the surface are. Uh, I think I'm starting to lose my mind, but I must, I must keep on. I must keep on living in this darkness, in this cold, in this loneliness uh, after the apocalypse. I must find a way to find, to see what's, what's there to, to live. It's horrible. Oh well, luckily it's not that uh, situation. So, um, today we're going to, uh, hello bastards, today we're going to talk about fallout shelters. Uh, this dramatic intro was just to show you how a uh, person who has who is been hiding in a fallout shelter after 15 days could be so how it would look like realistically. Uh, yeah, so that was a little example. I will put on the light to make to bring some clarity. All right. Then there was light. All right. Like I said, today we're going to talk about Fallout shelters. Um, yeah, fallout shelters. Uh, uh, why? What is the difference between just a regular shelter uh, and a fallout shelter? Now, fallout shelter is uh, specially designed for uh, against the nuclear weapons and radiation. So, uh, what are the speci specifics of a fallout shelter? A uh, fallout shelter is usually uh, a structure like some sort of basement shelter uh, underground uh, preferably five to six meters um, uh, why that uh, why that deep uh, several reasons actually because uh, between five and six uh, meters underground uh, the first thing uh, that is the protection against the fallout hence the name fallout shelter um, yeah because then, then you have enough materials between you and the surface uh, where even gamma rays will have difficult will be have difficulty to penetrate to that surface. Uh, it's protection against the blast wave. Uh, that layer of ground can form a, a base of protection against the shock wave, the blast, the initial heat for when a nuclear weapon detonates uh, very uh, nearby. Uh, just on top of it. No way. That's uh, kind of a myth that then you will have something. You will need something at least. Even the uh, how is that complex called the Sheen Mountain Complex, which is designed against nuclear blast, would still need to be six kilometers uh, kilometers away from the actual from an actual uh, average nuclear uh, detonation to survive and withstand it. So uh, if you have just uh, a basic uh, shelter, a fallout shelter, uh, and a nuclear bomb explodes on top of it, uh, you're gone. Um, yeah, but luckily, not everywhere. Uh, as long as you're a certain distance away from the nuclear blast, you can still uh, survive the initial in, uh, initial heat, shock wave, blast waves, and the first particles that fall down. And later on, uh, you have, like I said, a protection against uh, fallout. And a part and a radioactivity because of the ground that is between you. Uh, the second thing of a fallout shelter is uh, uh, some. It has usually it has a, a way to clean the air, uh, like uh, in a. It has a ventilation system which can bring which can bring in filtered air so nuclear particles won't get uh, get uh, inside of the fallout shelter. Uh, it's very important to have those things because if you just have uh, like a basement with no uh, ventilation or anything that brings in uh, fresh air, you will die of monoxide poisoning. Uh, 
uh, even after a long time with only your breathing and not without and even not without making a fire, you will it'll probably suffer from that faith. So always have some way to pump in uh, oxygen and fresh air, and to kind of blow uh, blow out uh, monoxide and such things. Uh, yeah. So what's the next part of a fallout shelter? A fallout shelter also needs to be equipped with a long-term uh, survival inside of a confined space. So we're thinking about water, sanitation, uh, food, uh, ways to make that food, light, uh, the basics to survive anywhere. Um, and the last part is, uh, yeah, like I said, protection. Uh, fallout shelters are usually made out of uh, at least 15 centimeters of a uh, weapon of a uh, concrete with uh, with metal in it to withstand the shockwave and the earthquake of a blast that is nearby at least to say so it also depends what kind of uh, concrete you're using and the way it is built um, there is a certain uh, company which is called Atlas Survival Shelters and that guy and that person uh, just started as everyone else just from a working job and thought I could I think I can build my own uh, fallout shelters he, he did then he started to build it for elder people and now he start he builds uh, professional uh, do does it only as a living now and that guy uh, says uh, had given a few interviews uh to people like canadian prepper and such and that guy says uh, he the, because of the rising prices he cannot uh, uh afford uh, he cannot afford it anymore to build shelters uh to irregular people because of the high prices of materials and such and such and he also says that uh, a lot of the wealthy people are buying bunkers and fallout shelters right now so there is a rising trend in fallout shelters uh, the elite and the rich people in the world know there is something up. Just a personal commentary there. Look it up, I would say, and you will see it for yourself. All right. But not everyone can afford uh, a fallout shelter. Uh, even I don't have a fallout shelter, so I'm going to use this basement, my basement as a example. But... Even though you cannot, uh, there was there could be other reasons you cannot uh, have a fallout shelter because of uh, perhaps uh, you don't have the financial financial uh, funds for it, uh, or you may you are not permitted by your local uh, authorities uh, and city planning that you are not allowed to have a permit to build something that under your house or in the garden. And that's another thing. When you plan to build a fallout shelter, if you can and if you are allowed, uh, I would suggest to build it in the garden. Uh, why in the garden? Because if you build it under your house uh, and uh, because of a nuclear bust or something, the building collapse, you're trapped inside of that uh, fallout shelter. So I would advise to build it in the garden or if you build it under your house, have a extra escape tunnel that leads to an open place where buildings cannot uh, uh, collapse over the entrance or exit of that uh, fallout shelter. So that's something to think about when you're going to build it. Um, yeah. Uh, now I'm going to talk about what, what uh, my plan is for a uh, fallout shelter when, when, the, when that uh, Armageddon is coming or something. I hope it will never will and it's kind of on the lower end of my uh, worries to say because if we are, if we are as uh, humani humanity stupid enough to use nuclear weapons against each other, um, yeah, then it's it's kind of over to be honest. You can you can be the best survivor there is. Uh, if the if the bombs start to fall, there is a high likely chance to not survive it, but keep surviving is is the motto. So. That's why I'm also where this is how I would prepare for it. Um, the first thing, uh, of course, is like we can see the water, uh, water storage, uh, because yeah, there will be no source of water available to get it. You cannot use the rain 
uh, or perhaps some water sources that you can find outside because it's dangerous to go outside. You have to have at least water for what for like four liters per person a day at least for the people you keep in your fallout shelter. Uh, that water is not only for drinking but also for for cooking food, for uh, hygienic uh, sanitation, that uh, sort of things. And uh, yeah, have at least for a total of nine weeks of water because nine weeks is the minimal time you you can uh, you can stay inside of a fallout shelter, and that uh, outside is minimally safe to say. I say minimally because even with a CBRN suit, uh, it will be uh, you cannot stay long outside, but. Most of the radiation will be, uh, the uh, big. Uh, there will still be pockets of radiation uh, around there, but in less, in less uh, quantities than after the direct blast. So the most will be blown away with the wind. Still use a CBRN suit when you go outside and do it as, in a small, uh, in a short time as possible, and get back in and decontaminate everything before you get in, and. Try to stay as long in inside of your fallout shelter as possible to avoid radiation uh, poisoning and sickness. All right. So you have your water. Uh, you have your food. Uh, also keep it for a minimum uh, for nine weeks of food. And I also would suggest to use foods that you don't have to cook uh, because, like I said, you're in a small space. Uh, yeah, if you start to cook here, burns. Uh, even if you use something like just a camping stove, uh, if you uh, you could use it if you have a good filter to pump in air and to blow out monoxide. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of dangerous if you don't have that. So in that case, I would suggest to have nine weeks at least uh, of these uh, emergency rations. You don't have to cook these. They have, uh, contain all the nutrients, even for small children. You can mix them with water and make a sort sort of porridge with it. Uh, it's 2,300 calories a day with this uh, package. So, if you, oh, if you like, have like a, few, a whole uh, load of these packages, that's uh, a good way to start. But you can also perhaps when your building is not that damaged and it provides some uh, cover, uh, some cover against radiation, you can perhaps try to just outside of the door, be, uh, outside of your uh, follow shelter, try to cook something very quickly and get in as fast as possible. If there is no air from outside directly exposing it, uh, try to perhaps before you try something like this, uh, try to measure with a Geiger counter before you go outside and start to cook something to see how much radiation there is if it's the from the moment you see there is too much just go direct, directly back in uh, yeah so that's something to watch out for uh, like i said try to cook outside of your follow shelter if it's safe to do that uh, i it's to your own judgment or keep something that you eat dry but also contain lots a lot of the nutrients uh, the next thing I would suggest are vitamin supplements because you will be probably in the dark like you see you saw in the beginning the the electricity will be probably out there you're on your own to make your own energy so you will be in the dark first problem uh, vitamin D's because you don't can you don't get outside and mostly of your vitamin D you get from the sun uh, next problem light. Uh, like I said, uh, there is the risk for monoxide poisoning, so the trusty tea candle is is kind of dangerous to use, I would say, unless you have a good ventilation system that with, with a good filter. But uh, in that case, I would suggest something that you can recharge, like a, a flashlight with a, with a dynamo, or an emergency radio with a dynamo, or something like this. It is also... Uh, a lamp, and in the meantime, because you have all, you have much too much time to around, you can load this up and start to have a light uh, on a smaller setting like this. 
you don't see that much but in this setting it's a uh, 400, 400 hours of light when fully charged or you can do it like both ways but these are only four hours eight hours if you do it in a half uh, on bright testing so depends on how you use it you can have a lot of light and try to make your own electricity for that way so you have light water food uh, next thing I would uh, advise to keep in your fallout shelter is uh, medicine. Uh, there are certain several types of medicine I would advise to keep in your uh, um, in your stock. Uh, you've probably seen uh, my video about medical preparedness at home. But for a fallout situation, I would suggest vitamin supplements, like I said, with uh, especially vitamin D and such. If you have a uh, a hard time with getting all the nutrients in your uh, diet that is very low at the moment. Uh, some sleeping tablets, perhaps, because because of the stress, people will that are in the fallout shelter will have a hard time getting asleep because of, like I said, stress, post-traumatic stress syndrome, perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, because of the coughing, because somebody is sick, perhaps. Uh, next are just the regular things, uh, bandages, uh, disinfection, alcohol, uh, just the basic first aid kits, uh, I would say, uh, yodium, uh, chloride, uh, yodium tablets uh, for when you're, uh, when you're exposed to radiation and you need to uh, avoid uh, thorax uh, infection of uh, uh, nuclear particles. So that's also something you can uh, put there in. Uh, don't forget, you can, yeah, when you're a citizen of Belgium, you can and ask in every pharmacy, local pharmacy, for a free package of yodium tablets, especially for this sort of situations. Every civilian gets one one packet for free. Um, all right, you got light, food, water, uh, medicine. The next thing I would uh, advise is a CBRN suit. I already made a video about the CBRN suit, but. Always keep your CBRN suit inside of your uh, um, fallout shelter, ready to be used whenever uh, with all the gear like to what to decontaminate and such the gas masks. If you can see, if you do, if you do not, when the filter is failing and you need to repair it, I also would advise to keep a gas mask uh, always close at hand because, yeah. It could happen that uh, because of cracks, there could be getting some radiation in. And while you can repair it, you can try to repair it uh, while wearing one of these. Mm, kind of tricky to be honest, but it's better than nothing. Always, it's better safe to be safe than sorry. Have reserve, have enough reserve filters. Oh, uh, have enough reserve filters ready. Um, the the, there are two, uh, uh, how do you say this, openings in this basement, uh, which is the door that leads to my house. So as long as my house is not blown away, uh, I'm kind of safe. But I already looked it kind of up and the most strategic strategic uh, places where nuclear bombs can fall. Uh, my, the area I live is kind of in the Goldilocks zone where all the radius of the average nuclear weapons uh, meet. Uh, just not meet each other yet. So that's kind of looking that way. So probably my house will be perhaps a little bit damaged, but not be totally blown away. So I can perhaps, in a case of a nuclear weapon, have enough cover to to cook in a little bit of a safe way, just outside of my door that uh, and stairways that leads to the basement. Uh, the next thing is there's a little uh, cellar window over there. But yeah, uh, even though it's kind of shielded uh, from a blast wave, because a secondary building is standing just in front there, a wall over there, uh, uh, other other buildings are over there. So a direct shock and blast wave would uh, perhaps only shatter the windows in the in the best scenario, I would say. So how would I fix this? Uh, Two ways I would uh, fix those. Uh, first of all, plates and sandbags. I would uh, place those directly after a blast in front of the cellar uh, window. Uh, first with a with a plate, then cover it with sandbags so there is protection against radiation. 
and try to close it off with as many sandbags as it, as it needs. And between those sandbags, there is perhaps a way to... To be honest, I don't have a, I don't have an air filter, but when the time is there and I haven't found one until that time yet, I probably could uh, improvise one. Uh, how? It might just sound stupid, but it's just an idea to give you to how to learn to improvise when things happen. It is my uh, water pump. So as you can see, uh, this gets sucked up when you start to uh, press this. And uh, everything that you pump up comes between these, those. So, in a way, if you manage to perhaps put a empty plastic bottle filled with uh, materials like cloth, um, how do you say this? Um, oh, I'm kind of an idiot that way. Um, activated charcoal and other materials that try get can get up uh, some particles. Uh, I can put it around this thing and shove it between the sandbags and on a regular base try to pump air. And like you can see, this thing sucks the, my skin in, so it pumps air in. But the problem is, uh, you have to do this uh, every so every now and then on a very uh, regular basis. So I will not have long sleeps to be honest. And for that, uh, you can perhaps use uh, a manual uh, clock because perhaps the electricity is out. I don't have batteries. You know how I, I am with batteries. So this is a manual clock that you have to wind up. And that way, every three hours, perhaps, I can start to pump in fresh uh, filtered air as possible. Perhaps I can even, with the spare filters, I can turn, I can try to take this off. I put this filter on top of it and try to push it through uh, between sandbags to be let everything be filtered through this. Uh, to be honest, this will not last that long perhaps, but it's better than nothing. And if I have enough reserve filters and it doesn't get contaminated uh, that fast, it's perhaps a possible idea. I don't know. I haven't just haven't tested yet. I have not been in nuclear. Uh, uh, thing, but uh, not in a nuclear event yet. But that's what I would improv try to improvise, uh, which is better than nothing. So that's uh, perhaps a way to build uh, a filter, or like I say, you try to build sandbags, plates, and try to put cloth between all those layers. So most of the air gets uh, particles gets catched on catched in those uh, layers, perhaps. And that way you perhaps get some air, fresh air in, or at least the most fresh air you can possibly have. Um, yeah, uh, I would duct tape the door off if it's still there. So that's a way to keep the radiation out. All right, so we talked about uh, water, electricity, uh, med medicine. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the thing you at the basics must have to Try to survive at least uh, nine weeks inside of a, uh, how do we say this, fallout shelter. But there is another aspect of fallout shelters that not many... Oh, yeah, sanitation. Almost forgot. Uh, yeah, you could perhaps buy uh, try to buy one of those, uh, how do you say this, so those portable toilets. But even those will eventually be getting full, to be honest. So you can try to buy one of those and try to, when when it's possible to to take the, when it's full, try to get it outside, uh, empty it and get it back in. Or when you cannot uh, have, if you do not have one, you can use, uh, yep. you can use just plastic trash bags, uh, do your business inside of this. You can perhaps even use one of those uh, uh, bedpans for a urine, these for uh, number two, to say. And uh, that way, you are perhaps, you can perhaps uh, have a less smell around here, because that's uh, not really good for the morale. Uh, which, talking about morale, uh, many people uh, underestimate the aspects of morality and psychology. 
for people when they are trapped inside of a small space with perhaps other people for a long time. It can build a lot of stress, especially after uh, something as bad as a nuclear uh, explosion. All the people you, you perhaps lost, you do know what the future will bring. Post-traumatic stress syndrome, perhaps you've seen uh, people with half melted faces or something like that. Uh, it can be very stressful and people will go nuts. Uh, not perhaps, okay, some people will get nuts directly, other will it will take some time. Depends on the person, personality and what that person has been through. So I would say try to keep busy uh, inside of the fallout shelter. Uh, there will be not uh, much light to be honest, probably something just like this. So if you're with multi uh, if you're alone, I would survive, uh, would advise to what what can you do? Just have some some games. Perhaps you uh, you have you can with a dynamo you can listen to music from your cell phone or MP3 or something. You can try to figure this one out. Do a little card game, patience or something. Read a read a book, write a diary. Uh, something to keep your mind busy uh, in a low light condition, actually. Um, and when you're with other people, try to tell stories, to play board games or something, play cards. Um, yeah, perhaps when you're with your partner, have some sexual activity, but on a safe way. So have the pill and the condoms ready. Uh, even in the fallout shelter for that, perhaps it's just an idea. Um, what else can you do? Uh, yeah, per perhaps some music instruments to keep you busy and practice, or other things. Uh, a manual type machine to write a story, perhaps. Uh, just to keep your mind busy, uh, because you don't want to be with alone or with somebody who has cabin fever. Uh, cabin fever is. A phenomenon that happens to people who are locked up inside of a small space. Uh, it was notorious, uh, especially in the er in a night in the early years in a, and still in a Arctic areas like Canada or something, where people because of snowstorms that could last uh, almost a month, people were tied up in a alley, were uh, confined to small uh, wood cabins. And after a certain period of time, some people, they were starting to get mad. They started to get uh, illusions. They started to, to grow madness. Some people even took their clothes off and started to go into the outside in on the snow naked and they died and frozen out there. So that could also especially happen in this situation. I think with uh, modern day people, uh, it will be even more so. To be honest so that's something to watch out for another thing if you're with other people uh, try to watch for each other because um, in such stressful situation like I said you don't know what the future bring you lost a many loved ones uh, you're hurt perhaps you're grow some cabin fever if you have any weapons of any kind try to lock them up somewhere somewhere that people cannot get just like that too, without notice of other people, like a gun, knife, uh, other sharp objects, axe. Uh, so those things, everything that could harm another people or people could harm them themselves with, try to lock it, lock it up in a place so the person can be stopped before they can harm another people or harm themselves or even commit suicide. So that's something to be very careful about. Um, yeah, and I would also suggest to have a way of communication, perhaps have a small radio, uh, uh, civil band radio, walkie-talkies to pick up a signal, signal from uh, perhaps rescue, uh, rescue crews, uh, the government, military, some, somebody who, has, who, has, who can start up communication from the outside and have a way to load those batteries up. Uh, that's another thing. Geiger counter, of course, to measure the radiation outside of your fallout shelter. Um, uh, that's uh, about it. Another thing, uh, when when you're expecting a blast um, and you're 
fallout shelter is not that strong enough there are certain things you can perhaps keep in your uh, fallout shelter um, first of all i would uh, suggest to have something it might sound stupid but just a crowbar to when when certain parts of the of the ceiling or walls collapsing you can perhaps uh, try to unblock it and perhaps try to get out of here before everything will collapse further because of aftershocks perhaps or because rain will make the the rooftop heavier the fallout the perhaps even snow could uh, put more weight on the roof that that it will collapse so that's something to watch out for have it's just a way to escape when when the time is needed uh, even even the door or perhaps a window because perhaps the lock has been melted because of the heat perhaps because something the brief fell in front of the door so we have to crack open the the how do you say this the sides of the door or the lock to break it open uh, perhaps you have to break through a wall to get out so you can break through the wall uh, with a, a hammer try to have a saw to get through the concrete uh, wiring have a shovel to dig yourself out in the situation or it's just a little idea you can you can have perhaps a few of these if you can see this uh, this is one of those uh, how do you say this so those uh, support beams uh, when you think uh, that the roof might collapse because like I said this is just a regular basement so perhaps when there is enough force from from the above going down I can try to support it with this uh, supporting beam try to Like that. Rest. Yeah. So now the middle of the basement has, has more support. So that's something perhaps useful. Uh, let's figure this one out later. Oh wait, we'll put this right down. To get it out of the way. Yep. All right, um, yeah, I have enough support. Uh, perhaps, like I said, uh, the gas mask could be very handy because if you need to make an escape, there will be dust uh, everywhere because uh, when a building collapses, it makes a lot of dust, perhaps even smoke. So when you try to escape, uh, have your gas mask already ready at hand. Uh, perhaps even those, uh, one of those, uh, um, oxygen tanks to held down before people other people that perhaps are around your house can try to dig yourself out this can buy precious minutes to to get some oxygen till people try to save you uh, for the rest uh, forgot with the sanitation just the regular things have some bleach ready some pool truck perhaps to disinfect water um, that you want to reuse from somewhere or guess I guess uh, have some soap ready I would suggest some some not really soap but something to to wash your one of those how do you say this those dry soaps that you don't need that much water to wash yourself with just to keep your uh, sanitation a little bit up order some toilet paper and you can put those in the back uh, also um, if I didn't forgot anything else, uh, I would say that's about it. Uh, when it's time to leave, I would always suggest when you leave the fallout shelter, have your CBRN suit on. Try to put some cover on your uh, oh, your bug out bag before leaving, because you will not want to survive. Uh, you will not uh, build your your life in a safe in a in the radiation zone. I would say. So that's my that's why I would say keep the bug out bag ready, the CBRN suit, because the time that you're in the fallout shelter just is just needed to survive. The time that is needed to till it's safe uh, when the uh, levels outside are safe enough to go outside and try to get the hell out of there, uh, get to an evacuation point to another country, immigrate, 
uh, try to find uh, rescue uh, when rescue operations are a pan to save people who are might who are perhaps in the zones, the radi the radiation zones and such. So a fallout shelter is just temporary, a long temporary, but not for always. Uh, unlike some movies that you perhaps have seen, but I will rant about that perhaps in another video. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, that's my uh, take on how you would uh, uh, prepare uh, for a nuclear for nuclear weapons as a normal civilian. Uh, one more thing I, I would like to to point out something that I forgot to say. Try to put everything uh, because some people who have like uh, survival bunkers uh, or fallout shelters, uh, they sometimes I, I see them stock everything on on uh, how do you say that IKEA IKEA shelves or those uh, portable uh, yeah the portable shelves uh, try to to make everything to store everything on such a way that it cannot fall up fall down because. When all these water are just on a regular wooden shelf or something, or stuck to the wall, and in because of the blast, everything starts to shake. You don't want everything to fall down and start to break or open. Your you don't want your equipment to go broken because it fell from the shelf. Try to secure everything in place. Oh, yeah, I know. I keep I keep doing this, but the points. Uh, I sometimes forget the points. Uh, the thing that I'm sitting on is. Uh, a field bed, like I can see, oh. just one of those uh, regular uh, uh, camping field beds. Uh, why a field? Why a field bed? Uh, you would ask. Uh, some people like to have a, a bed that is attached to the wall or something. That's something to save space that you can just clap open. But I prefer a collapsible uh, camping bed. Uh, why? Because it's a small space and perhaps I want to do something crazy and pass the time with doing something like river dance or something. I don't know. It's probably the cabin fever or something. But if you need more room to do something or to have some exercise because that's also important to keep you busy, perhaps you can just throw balls, a ball against the wall like that guy in The Great Escape. Perhaps you just want to walk little uh, tours around to keep yourself busy and in shape and your muscles uh, running. You can fold this bed up and have some extra room inside of the the fallout shelter. Uh, try to make it comfy. Have a sleeping bag. Uh, I use my trusty blank, uh, my trusty woolen blanket. Have something to support your uh, head on to have a good uh, to have some good sleep. Uh, like I said, have a, a clock with a, a manual clock to try to pump in some fresh air every now and then so you don't suffocate. Uh, now I think I'm um now I think I'm ready. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, leave a reaction if I forgot something, which I probably did, but we'll see. Uh, Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. I think this is the last part of the of the nuclear disaster series unless I come up with with another extra topic I can talk about, but I think I covered most of the things. So, goodbye and thank you for watching.